then you have the slideshow presentation um, on hard copy, and I will be projecting. If you have any questions as I go through, please stop me and ask me, and I will try to point out where to find the information from the slides in your book as we go through. For the fiscal year 2023 audit, the county received a clean opinion. So it's called an unmodified opinion, which means there were no material discrepancies or material issues found in the financial audit. For the prior fiscal year, June 30, 22, the county also received a certificate of excellence in financial reporting from the GFOA. Um, that has been applied for for the June 23 fiscal year, um, so hopefully that result will come in soon. In fiscal year 23, the governmental fund revenues, and if you're wanting to follow along in this book, this is on page 33, it's exhibit 4. But the largest majority of those revenues, 44.6%, came from your ad valorem taxes, a total of $62.7 million. Coming in next is your restricted intergovernmental revenues at 25.9% or $36.4 million. Restricted intergovernmental revenues are funds coming from governmental agencies that have a restriction tied to them either through grant funding or other means where they are already designated by that agency for what they can be spent for. And then next is sales tax at 23.8%, no, I'm sorry, 16.6%, .6 million dollars. Total revenues for the county for your governmental funds was $140.5 million for the fiscal year. <coughs> For your expenditures, also on that same page in the red book, your largest category of expenditures was public safety. A total of 32% of total expenditures or $39.1 million. Coming in second is education at 19%, a total of $23.8 million spent. And then health um, human services, Coming in next at 16% of total expenditures or $19.6 million for a total of $124 million for all expenditures <coughs> during the fiscal year. Total cash for the county increased by approximately $28.7 million to $101.7 million. That is located on page 27 in this book on Exhibit 1 that excludes restricted cash. Restricted cash being loan funds that you have received but have not spent yet or um, money that has been designated for particular purposes and is restricted for those purposes. For governmental activities, the cash increased by $23.2 million and the business type activities increased by $5.5 million. For general fund revenues, and this information will be on page 35, you originally started the fiscal year with a budget of $101.9 million. Through budget amendments, just like you had tonight in the consent agenda, you increased that to $120.7 million. And your actual revenues that came in during the fiscal year were $123.4 million. Always a great thing to have more revenue coming in than what you can plan for and expect. For those general fund revenues, the key sources of money coming in was your ad valorem taxes at $54.5 million. Um, to see this level of detail, you actually have to go back to page 115. Um, the budget was 54.5 million, but you brought in 56.7 million dollars, um, a difference of 2.2 million. Another large increase was sales and use tax, originally budgeted at 15 million dollars, came in at 17.6 million for an increase. 
we came in favorable by 2.6 million. Um, and then just to point out, health fees is on here as well. That one you budgeted for 3.8 million, but the revenues that came in were actually 2.3 million. And a lot of times those can be reimbursements or things like that. If activity didn't happen, those funds may not have come in or it could be a timing from branch or agencies and things like that. expenditures back to the front of the book page 35 you originally budgeted to spend 101.9 million dollars <coughs> budget amendments brought that to a plan of 120.7 million you actually spent 110 million dollars so you came in under budget um, and therefore, you know, your budgeting process worked to make sure that you had funds budgeted before they were spent and things like that. To break those expenditures down into a little more detail, um, this can also be found on page 35. The largest differences um, for these functions came in as public safety, originally budgeted at 35.6 million, and they spent 31.5 four million and human services budgeted at 22.7 million came in at 19.3 million on this next slide this will show you some of those departments and how those big differences came to play for public safety the first four categories the communication jail rescue and ambulance services and also the sheriff department, it shows you their original budget and what they actually spent. The largest differences being in communication and in the rescue and ambulance services. Those can be particularly tied to lack salaries for positions that were not filled that were originally budgeted or there was a time during the fiscal year where those positions were not filled. Also supply chain issues. So we couldn't get the products in. Specifically, I believe there were some ambulances that had been planned for that did not come in, so those expenditures did not occur during the fiscal year. The next three categories will cover the big difference in human services, so clinical health, social services administration, and social services programs. And those, again, can be lack salaries, but also when they did not meet their budget for the revenues, the expenses were controlled because they didn't see those budgeted funds coming in. Total fund balances, this is on page 33 in the book, and it shows on the left-hand side, fiscal year 22, balances for the general fund, other governmental funds and the total governmental funds and then on the right hand side it shows you fiscal year 23. For the general fund the fund balance increased by 14.3 million dollars. The other governmental funds increased by 5.3 million dollars for a total increase to governmental funds of 19.6 million. <coughs> To break the general fund down into a little more detail, there are different categories of fund balance. And so I wanted to demonstrate what those different categories are. The very smallest one on the left-hand side is non-spendable. This is things that they're not cash. You can't go out and spend them. Inventory is a very clear example of one of those or prepaids where you've already spent the money but haven't received the benefit. Um, those actually decreased from the prior year to 48,000. And if you ever need definitions for these categories, they're found on page 51 in the red book. The red category is restricted. So restricted means that a grantor agency or law or creditors have told you how you can spend the money. You don't have the freedom to make a change to that. Those funds increased by $1.3 million. The yellow color is committed. 
committed funds are for a specific purpose. Um, it can be done by a major vote of the Board of Commissioners. Those actually decreased in fiscal year 23 by $433,000. The assigned fund balance. This is something that is either budgeted or has been set aside by you, the board. Those funds increased by $7.8 million. The largest majority of that increase came for economic development, which increased by 6.3 million, <coughs> and then an increase of 1.9 in what you set aside for subsequent year expenditures. So you had fund balance appropriated in your 24 budget. The unassigned funds are the funds that the board can choose to spend, can be used for budget, or you have a fund balance policy which keeps a percentage of that set aside for rainy day or anything like that. That fund increased by $5.6 million. So I did want to say that even though the general fund on the previous slide here increased by $14.3 million, only 5.6 million of that is unassigned because you've already made actions to allocate those funds to something else. Now your appropriated fund balance. Um, this is your plan to use your savings. So in your budget, when your revenues do not equal your expenditures or are not greater than your expenditures, you have to say, okay, I'm willing to fund this with our savings account type of thing. In 23, you had originally planned to use $3.6 million through budget amendments that went to 11.6, but in actuality, you did not use any of your fund balance. You actually added to it. For your general fund, a measure of looking at the health of the general fund is by looking at how much you have unassigned that's available to you as a percentage of total expenditures. In fiscal year 22, that was 27.9%. Fiscal year 23, that's 33.3%. So you have unassigned today a third of your total expenditures from fiscal year 23. Another measure to look at that, this is particularly looked at by the state um, treasurer's department, the local government commission, is they look at fund balance available for appropriation. So basically they are taking a formula of which fund balances are available that could be allocated to particular purposes or are unassigned and comparing that to your total expenditures it's a consistent formula across everybody in the state so that they all have a common ground to calculate it. Um, in fiscal year 22, Franklin came in at 40.8%. Fiscal year 23, they came in at 54.3%. In fiscal year 22, with the information collected from all the counties in the state, then they break it up into population groups. For the population group that Franklin is a part of, the statewide average was 42.5%. So you were just a little below that, but as you can see, you improved that statistic very much for fiscal year 23, so hopefully you will be greater than that when all of the numbers are collected this year. For your adjusted tax levy, if you look at page 157 in the back of this book, that will give you more details on that but your levy increased by $3.3 million from fiscal year 22 for a total levy of $56.9 million. That includes vehicles and real property. Your tax collection percentages. So of that levy, in 22, you collected 98.4%. Not a lot of room to improve that, but you did in fiscal year 23, that improved to 98.7%. The statewide average for all the counties in your population group is 98.14%. Now 
Now switching over to your uh, business type funds, if you're looking in the red book, it's on page 146. We're going to start with the water sewer fund. They have total revenues of $18.3 million <coughs> and total expenditures of 12.3 for a revenues over expenditures of 5.9, roughly $6 million. Um, I included depreciation and amortization because it's a very expensive infrastructure to run a water sewer department. And if you are not calculating what it's going to cost to potentially replace those assets, then you could come up in trouble. So this shows you that your depreciation on the assets you already have was $1.8 million, leaving you with a profit still of $4 million. So you are covering those future infrastructure needs. To break down the water sewer revenues, um, you had 58% coming in from water fees, $10.7 million. Your sewer fees made up about 30% of total revenues at $5.5 million. And then other charges um, for water sewer department came in at 12% or $2 million. The expenditures for the water sewer fund are largely made up of water purchases, where you're purchasing from other water systems, 34% or $4.2 million. Also, the operating and capital expenses, that came in at 32% or $3.9 million. Now your water sewer net position, this is similar to fund balance in governmental terms, but um, they just call it net position in the business type funds. The net investment in capital assets, so this is how much you've spent for your assets less the accumulated depreciation. That increased by $1.4 million. In the unrestricted, category, you increased by $4.6 million to $26.4 million. For a total net position of $50.8 million, an increase of $6 million over fiscal year 22. Now moving over to solid waste fund. They had revenues of $3 million from solid waste, $1.9 million from the landfill, and roughly a little less than $300,000 for other fees and charges. For total revenues of $5.2 million. Their expenditures were $4.7 million, leaving a buffer of $477,000. Again, talking about their depreciation, like we did with water sewer, their depreciation was $209,000, so leaving a net profit of $269,000. Um, so it did decrease a little from the prior year, um, and one of our cautions is just making sure that as you plan for the future, um, I know you've got infrastructure projects and things like that going on, is that your fees will cover those expenses as they occur. Um, and if you need more detail on that information, it's on page 148. Your solid waste net position actually went down by $287,000 in total. Um, that is made up of an increase in the fixed assets or the net investment in capital assets of $295,000 from the projects that have started and a decrease in the unrestricted category of roughly $600,000. When we look at total debt for the county, general fund bonded debt decreased by four and a half million dollars for a total of 29.9 million. General fund installment purchases decreased by 1.7 million for a total of 22.9. Your general fund leases and subscriptions increased by 1.2 million dollars. There was new standards impacting the county this year. Subscriptions have never been accounted for. 
but they are now required by NASB, which is the governing body for financial accounting for governmental agencies, and they <coughs> added $1.3 million in debt to the county's books. Water and sewer increased by $3.7 million um, to $18.4 million, mostly made up of work on the wastewater treatment plant rehabilitation and the sanitary sewer pump station rehabilitation. Internally, the solid waste fund has borrowed a total of $1.8 million from the general fund and what is owed at June 30th, 23 is 1.7 million. There is a structured agreement in place for the solid waste to pay that money back to the general fund and they did make a $90,000 payment in fiscal year 23. Before I finish, I did want to point out in the very back of the book, we have um, the compliance section. I just encourage you when you have some time to read that, um, the bulk of it starts on page each. questions I will be 